to the second semi-final of Britain's Got Talent. Remember, this year, the judges send their favourite act to the final, then you at home take over and vote for your choice. Next up tonight is a Scouse comedian who's also a man of the cloth. Now, I thought I'd introduce him with a little rhyme. OK. OK. There was a young man called Alan Finnegan. He grew... Actually, actually, he's, he's 52. He's not that young, so he's middle-aged. <laughs> I'll, I'll start again. Start then. again. There was a middle-aged man called Alan Finnegan. He grew whiskers on his chin again. Actually, it's, no, he's, he's clean-shaven, isn't he? Alan, he hasn't got whiskers on his chin again. Maybe you want to begin again. No, I won't begin again. Yeah, no. I'll just introduce him. It's middle-aged, clean-shaven Alan Finnegan. My name's Alan Finnegan, and I'm a Baptist minister from Bootle in Liverpool. I love my job, and it definitely has some perks. Thanks, Barbara. I haven't always been a minister of a church. I used to be a builder. So when are you going to fix that church roof then, or? I'll get around to it. But I've now led our church for the last 15 years. That's 15 years of work on Sundays. There's never a quiet moment just to put your feet up. Alan, will you pray for me cat? It's gone missing again. All right, Janet, I'll be right there. My wife Joyce and my daughters are my biggest supporters. I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for them. I'd probably be in the Maldives, mortgage-free, sipping a pina colada. But when I'm not at work, I'm on stage doing stand-up comedy. Being a stand-up comedian and a minister of a church kind of goes hand in hand for me. I have to deal with difficult audiences. Brenda, wake up, love. You see, I'm doing Britain's Got Talent for you. And if we all pray hard enough, you never know, might win that 250 grand and we'd be able to get a new roof. I've got to be honest, uh, that doesn't happen every week, so, uh, you know, but uh, you can forget that new roof run now. I'm going to get one of these instead. I just, uh, so, uh, so uh, but this is a bit like church, you know, what people think it's church. I'm in a massive pulpit, miles away from anyone else, with just four people sitting there judging everything I'm going to say. Uh, you're awake, so that's a bonus, uh, so... Uh, since being on the show, uh, people have asked me what it's like getting recognised. I've got no idea. Every time I've been out, I've had a mask on, you know? <laughs> My wife, I think she took self-isolation really seriously, though. Uh, she left me. <laughs> <laughs> she's back, she's back, it's OK. I had something that no one else had. Uh, a full pack of super soft Andrex toilet paper, so... <laughs> I have put a bit of weight on in lockdown, so I've been on a diet. I thought I was doing all right when I lost four and a half pounds in my first week. Yeah, yeah. But then I realised Jesus shifted the stone in three days, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm always getting asked about my kids, whether what they think about their dad being a minister. They're fine, to be honest, uh, except for the fact that I gave them biblical names. Oh, Mary's all right, but John the Baptist, she's fuming. Uh, <laughs> the toughest thing I do has to be funerals. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm not very good at them. So, uh, but I, I know a lot of people have been affected by bereavement. I have myself. Just before Christmas, my only uncle passed away. Uh, God rest his soul. And, uh, well... <laughs> I had him in the secret Santa, so, you know, <laughs> every cloud uh, <laughs> saved me 20 quid, that did. <laughs> yeah. uh, my first funeral uh, was in a crematorium, right, and it was a disaster. I was nervous, I'm dyslexic, uh, so I'd made notes and I was checking them as the coffin was coming down the aisle to glory again as I will survive. <laughs> On reflection, I probably shouldn't have danced, but, uh, you know, 
it was a terrible choice for a funeral song, that isn't it? Eh? So, uh, so yeah. So I was, I checked my notes and I was stood there, and I was like, I'd suddenly realised that I'd forgot to put the deceased's name down in my notes. <laughs> I know, uh, right? I think it's Hilda, but I can't be sure. Next minute, it feels like it's a game of who wants to be a millionaire. I'm on. I'd have loved to have gone 50-50 or phone a friend. I can't really ask the audience, can I? That option's gone. <laughs> I was just glad it wasn't deal or no deal. I wasn't going to open that box for no offer. <sighs> you know, I'm, 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 I'm starting to panic at this point, but I'm trying to remain professional, yeah? And I'm looking for clues. And I spot the flowers on the lid of the coffin. And in big, bold, capital letters, the name Anna. And I think to myself, thank you, God. Thank you, God. You do exist. Thank you, God. <sighs> My dyslexia had kicked in, hadn't it? It was Nana, so. <laughs> at that point, they put a black and white photograph up of the deceased. And I was looking at this photograph, and I was thinking to myself, you were pretty fit in your day. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I was thinking to myself, what's your name? It's like the worst game of Guess Who ever, right? Uh, and I'm playing for my life at this point. But then, in a moment of divine inspiration, the name Jean dropped into my head. And I said confidently, it's Jean, final answer. <laughs> the relief I had at that moment, right? It was like, Jean, Jean, sweet Jean. I'm gonna miss you, Jean. Rest in peace, Jean. It wasn't Jean. Uh, it was Hilda all along, wasn't it? Should have stuck with my first answer. Uh, you're taking it slightly better than they did, to be honest. Uh, I just need to get to the words of committal. You know, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And just as I'm about to send Hilda on her final journey, my phone went off in my pocket, and I can hear Rihanna and these unfortunate words. Just gonna stay. Could have been worse, it could have been. Oh, na na, what's my name? What's my name? <laughs> I'm the Reverend Alan Finnegan. Uh, good night and God bless. Ashley, let's start with you. Oh man, I was excited for this. I loved your audition, and then you, you came out of there like a rock star, and I'm thinking to myself, right. What, what, what's going to happen here? And you had some really good moments, and then about halfway through, it just kind of lost me. It's so difficult in this situation for a comedian, I get that, but I don't think it landed and hit quite as much as you wanted it to. OK. David? I thought it was very funny, and I think one of the things that's very important when you're a comedian is you're memorable. And you're really memorable. You've got a lot of things, you know, up your sleeve, haven't you? Because you're scout, so that helps. And also, you're a man of the cloth. So I mean, how many comedians are there um, that have a dog collar? I can't think of any. I thought it was great, and I loved the jokes that were really about, you know, what you do. So well done, Alan. Thank you. I love the fact that you are unique, as David said. You know, and I really did love your first audition and was rooting for you, but. I do think different comedians for different tastes. And for me tonight, it just felt a little bit under par. You know, I want to be sitting here ugly laughing and belly laughing, and I just wasn't doing that. And I'm so sorry that I didn't okay. make that connection with you tonight. Having said that, I still love you. So Thank well done, darling. Well yeah. Done. It is. It's a tough gig being um, a man of the cloth, and it's a tough gig yeah. being a comedian. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, so I think in those circumstances, and these unique circumstances, you did a really good job. There were some very funny jokes in there. You know, you're, you're talking from a very unique standpoint for that. You won me today, so well done. Thank you, judges. Well done, Al. How was it for you up there? Because we, we talked before, didn't we? And you were incredibly nervous. That went better than rehearsals, let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> rehearsals were terrible. Was it, <laughs> was it enjoyable in the end? Yeah, it was all right, yeah. It couldn't have got any worse in rehearsals, so... <laughs> I was sad. Well, I'm just happy that went all right. Listen, well done. You can send Alan to the final. 